Hello guys! So for today, I am going to talk all about the reproductive system. So let's go! So the female reproductive system includes all of the internal and external organs that are needed for the one who helps with the reproduction. The female reproductive system is comprised of the internal and external organs. The first organ is the ovaries. This is the cotton ball like circle. The ovaries are the female gonads. The fallopian tubes, which are the two muscular tubes that connect the ovaries to the uterus. And the uterus, which is the strong muscular site which the fetus can develop in. This is where the, the fetus grows. This is where it takes all the nutrients and grows in the uterus. The neck of the uterus is the cervix and it protrudes into the vagina. This all comprises the internal female reproductive system. We will now go to the external organs. The external organs are usually called the genitals. Now the genitals is comprised by the mons pubis, the clitoris, and the labia. Now the ovaries are a pair of whitish organs about the size of a walnut. They are held in place slightly above on an either side of the uterus and tubes by ligaments. There are three kinds of ligaments. These are the broad ligament, ovarian ligament, and the suspensory ligament. Suspensory ligament is very important because the ovarian artery, ovarian vein, and ovarian nerve plexus are passed through it to reach the ovary. This process of oocyte development follows that of a follicular development and, there, and this can be broken down into three stages. Now the first stage lasts from infancy to puberty. During this stage, the primary oocyte is stuck in the prophase of meiosis 1. In other words, the cell is just living, but not dividing. Meanwhile, the primordial follicle turns to primary follicle meaning that the follicular cells surrounding the primary oocyte developed into granulosa cells. In the secondary follicle, the primary oocyte is still in the prophase step in meiosis 1. But now, the follicles has another layer of granulosa cells as well as thicka cells. Thicka cells make androstenedione, which is the sex hormone Precursor and granulosa cells use the enzyme aromatase and convert it into estradiol, a member of the estrogen family. We will now move on to the third stage. The third stage follicular development starts when the graphene follicles are ready in the course during the follicular phase of the menstrual. Menstrual cycle starts on the first day of bleeding and last 28 days on average from then. Assuming 28 day cycle, the follicular phase makes up the first two weeks of the menstrual cycle and the luteal phase the last two weeks. These two phases are separated by ovulation menstruation, which is when the follicle erupts, releases oocyte that is ready to be fertilized. This usually occurs in day 14 over 28 days of cycle. The dominant follicles complete its third stage of development in a blaze of glory called ovulation. That's when the nearly 2 centimeter size follicle is follicle 
ruptures and releases the tiny secondary oocyte into the fallopian tube. The secondary oocyte stops in the phase of meiosis too and waits for fertilization as a menstrual cycle transition into the luteal phase. This follicle it is a scar on the surface of the ovary that is a remnant of ovulation. After ovulation, the secondary oocyte makes a very short journey through the personal space and lands in the fallopian tube. The first part is the fembrae, which are the finger-like projections that surrounds the ovary and guide the secondary oocyte into the fallopian tube. Next is the infundibulum and then the ampulla region, which is fertilization takes place between the secondary oocytes and the sperm. This is the magical spot where they meet and then it travels to the isthmus region which open into the uterine cavity. On the outside, the fallopian tube is covered by peritoneum and supported by the mesosalpinx which is part of the broad ligament. On the inside, the fallopian tube have a smooth muscle with inner lining that has ciliated cells slowly sweep the secondary oocyte or zygote towards the uterus. It is a scar on the surface. The uterus is a hollow organ that sits behind the urinary bladder and in front of the rectum. The top of the uterus above the opening of the fallopian tube is called the fundus and the region below the fundus opening is called the uterine body. The uterus tapes down into the uterine isthmus and finally the cervix which protrudes into the vagina. The cervix has a superior opening at the top and an inferior opening down below, both which have mucus plugs to keep the uterus close off, except during menstruation and night before ovulation. To a la to a to a last sperm to reach the cervix has a superior opening at top and an inferior opening down below, both which have mucus plug to keep the uterus close off, except during menstruation and right before ovulation, to a last sperm to reach the the secondary oocyte. The uterus is. The uterus is anchored to the sacrum by uterosacral, by uterosacral ligaments to the anterior body wall by round ligaments and then supported laterally by cardinal ligaments as well as the mesometrium which is part of the broad ligament. The uterus is a hollow organ that sits behind the urine. The wall of the uterus has three layers. The Perimetrium, which is in lay continuous with the line, with the lining of the periton peritoneal cavity. The myometrium, which is made up of smooth muscle that contracts during childbirth to help push the baby out. And the endometrium, a mucosal layer that undergoes monthly cyclic changes. During the follicular phase of the menstrual cycle, the endometrium thickens in case fertilization occurs. During the luteal phase, spiral arteries emerge to bring more nutrients to support thick endometrium. If fertilization does not occur, spiral arteries collapse and the superficial layers of the endometrium die. During menstruation or menstrual bleeding, the dead tissues removed or slides off of the uterus through the vagina. The vagina the vagina has a muscular wall and is covered by inner mucosa with ridges that run along it. The vagina is the passageway for the baby during childbirth and opens up into the vulva. In childhood, a thin sheath of vagina mucosa called the hymen partially covers the vagina opening the vagina opening and it can break because of exercises the use of tampons or sexual enter the vagina has the external sex organs together referred as to the vulva 
are the labia majora, or two greater lips, the labia manora, which we call the two smaller lips, the mons pubis, or mountain of pubis, and the clitoris, which is the small erectile organ that developed from the same embryonic tissue as the male penis, and it's headed by a skin fold called the clitoral head. The labia mahora and the mons pubis become covered by pubic hair during puberty. The labia majora cover the labia manora, and between the labia manora, there's a space called vol volocular vestibule, and that includes the opening of the vagina and the urethral opening.